Shalom. First and foremost, I'm giving all praises to the Heavenly Father in the name of His only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders at Great Millstone. The men who taught me this truth, peace and salutation to the hopeful elect brethren, faithfully and diligently preaching this word with fear and trembling. Shalom to the believers. The men, women, and children that subscribe and listen to this truth through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Alright, so I got an article here from warontherocks.com. And uh, I'm entitling this lesson, okay, um, The Beast is Weakened. Okay, or uh, The Beast is Weak. The U.S. Military Recruiting Crisis. Okay, the U.S. military recruiting crisis, and uh, that's the title of this article from WarOnTheRocks.com by uh, David Barno and Noro Ben Shael or Ben Ben Sahil Ben Sahil David Barno and Noro Ben Sahil March 10, 2023. All right, and uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna get into it. It says. The all-volunteer force may finally have reached its breaking point. During the first years of the recent wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, many military expo experts worried that the constant deployments would break the force since they expected that fewer young Americans would volunteer to serve in a wartime military. Thankfully, that didn't happen. Yet, a perilous recruiting crisis began just after the United States fully withdrew from Afghanistan last summer, and it shows no sign of abating anytime soon. As a result, the U.S. military is shrinking. <laughs> you hear that? I'm going to read it again. As a result, the U.S. military is shrinking, not because of any strategic choices, but simply because there aren't enough qualified volunteers. And that may have enormous implications for the U.S. strategic position in an increasingly uncertain and dangerous world. How bad is the recruiting crisis? During the last fiscal year, the Army missed its recruiting goal by 15,000 active duty soldiers, or 25% of its target all right so if 25 percent of its target is 15,000 it mean they have a uh, recruiting target of 60,000 so they mean they only recruiting about 45,000 a year all right and keep that number in mind <clears throat> this shortfall this shortfall force so like it this shortfall forced the army to cut its planned active duty strength from 476,000 to 466,000. In the current fiscal year, it's likely to be even worse. Army officials project that active end strength could shrink by as much as 20,000 soldiers by September, down to 445,000. That means the nation's primary land force could plummet by as much as 7% in only two years. At a time when its missions are increasing in Europe and even in the Pacific, where the Army provides many of the critical wartime theater enablers without which the other services cannot function. All right. Now, me and uh, the brother Karab and my camp, uh, you know, on the highways and hedges yesterday, we got into this uh, topic a little bit. All right, dealing with the U.S. military recruiting crisis, and the brother pulled this source right here, which seems to be a you know a pretty solid source for uh, war information. All right, WarOnTheRocks.com. But anyway, that 25% uh, uh, drop in recruiting, all right, which means uh, the U.S. is uh, has like a sixty thousand a 60,000 uh the number 60,000 of the soldiers they try to recruit per year 
All right. Now it's 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 been said out there now North Korea has 800,000 citizens um ready to join or re-enlist. All right. Join or re-enlist uh the North Korean military. Now when you take that number 800,000, right? Let's take a look at this number, 800,000. When you, when you look at that number, all right, let me see, pull up my calculator. Where is it? There it is. So you pull up this number, 800,000, right? And you divide it by 60,000, which is America's annual recruitment goal for their military. You get this number here, 13.33. So that's 13 years of soldiers that the American military uh would need to recruit in order to reach that number 800,000, man. So North Korea just recruited 13 years worth of soldiers in one day, all right? Now that's heavy. Why? <clears throat> because of prophecy. And you go here in Joel, the third chapter, it says, verse nine, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, Wake up the mighty man. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. And when you go into this term, uh, this phrase, let them come up, it means uh, to let them advance. Okay? Let them advance. And that's what it says here in the NLT. So I'm going to read it and I want to get the word advance. All right? Say to the nations far and wide, get ready for war. Call out your best warriors. Let all your fighting men advance, advance for the attack, right? So you get this word here, advance. Let's see what comes up. Not advance, auto part. Hmm. It says, move forward in a purp purposeful way to make a cause to make progress a forward movement a development or improvement you know so the beast all right so we'll go back to this article uh the beast is not advancing man according to uh this uh war on the rocks right <clears throat> I want to go back to that point <clears throat> it, it says <clears throat> here right light it up as a result the u.s military is shrinking <laughs> not because of any strategic choices but simply because there aren't enough qualified volunteers <laughs> they don't got any warriors man all right and we understand that the american culture promotes what uh feminism all right and these men that you see being breeded here in america all right they're not fit to go to war in other words they're not qualified <laughs> as the article says okay so what does this mean this means that america's on the way out man okay just as Bib biblical prophecy foretells Babylon the Great is falling. So 
this is great news, man. This is great news, all right, as pertaining to uh, the salvation of the elect of the nation of Israel and the kingdom of heaven being established on earth because we understand that America has to be removed out of the way, you know? Now, we looked up, which I'm gonna do that now. We looked up, uh, <clears throat> how many, all right, how many, Soldiers have left the U.S. military, right? And the first thing that came up, right? And like I said, we went over this. And I just wanted to you know, pull up the, uh, the sources and get into this a little bit, you know, uh, more precise. Okay. Is it count? We, we skimmed through it a little bit yesterday. We, we touched on it, but I wanted to get into it and, uh, you know, put this edification out there. Okay. So let's look at what skillbridge.osd that meal okay this is a uh, military discharge data okay it says each year 200,000 service members leave the military this map provi provides some useful state specific data reflecting the total number of personnel who are projected to leave the military from a given state all right <laughs> So, it was another one. Here it is. It says, each year, approximately 200,000 men and women leave the U.S. military service and return to a life as civilians, a process known as the military-civilian transition. Okay? So, then when you type in, uh, why are soldiers... <clears throat> My soldiers okay so lock it why are soldiers leaving the US military all right so this is armytimes.com, right? This is from uh, December the 6th, 2021, right? <clears throat> and I'll get straight to it where it was highlighted. It says, why soldiers leave the army? According to nearly 38,000 troops, Whose surveys were analyzed, the top reasons for leaving the army were related to their families, but even considering those factors, the army, army's retentions is strong. The service retained nearly 2,000 more troops than its fiscal year 2021 retention goal. Let's see. All right, survey, survey troops said these were the top five reasons for leaving the army. The percentages indicate how many soldiers felt the factors were extremely or somewhat important to their decisions. Effects of deployments on family or personal relationships. So where they being deployed? Because these soldiers know that joining the U.S. military, they ass getting shipped off over there uh, to war in the east. All right, whether it be Iran, Afghanistan, uh, Syria, uh, you know, uh, Ukraine, uh, Germany, so forth and so on. You know, they getting shipped off. That's 51%. It says impacts of army life on significant others' career plans and goals. Impacts of army life on family plans for children. Uh, the degree of stability or predictability of army life. Uh, impact of military service on my family's well-being. You know, 
And that's another thing. A lot of these soldiers are going over there to war and their families are here back in America struggling because uh, America is in a recession, man. All right. So they are over there at war and they can't even provide enough uh, income to take care of their families back at home. So what's the fucking point? All right. Bottom line is America cannot support uh, the, the the these troops' families, so they're not, uh, you know, they they're uh, what's it called when they leave? They're uh, they're discharging, all right? They're discharging, man. But again, this is all a part of biblical prophecy, man. You know. Meanwhile, these other nations and countries are. Uh, becoming stronger okay as the scriptures say that the weak say I'm strong okay oh well that was the very next verse so like, uh, this is Joel 3 and 10 beat your plowshares in the prunent in the in Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I'm strong. Okay. Hammer your plowshares is the NLT in the swords and your pruning hooks in the spears. Train even your weaklings to be warriors. <laughs> and see, that's what it's about to come down to, uh, especially for America. Uh, that's going to be a draft. All right. Now you tell me with the type of of men that's being breeded in America that I just mentioned. We, we know the moles, you know, the, the, the gender neutral soldiers, you know, the, the we and the them and the us. <laughs> you know, you, you tell me what type of warriors America is going to have in their armies versus the soldiers over there in the Middle East. Because countries like China, uh, China bring their soldiers up from youth, okay? You know, they they have they don't uh have recruitment problems in, in in China, okay? And we just did the math on the numbers with the recent uh you know, with the with the recent uh, number of uh recruits in North Korea. That's 13 years worth of soldiers that America's uh goal uh, 60,000 years, man. Okay. And they've been missing that goal by 25%. So this beast is uh, in a very vulnerable position, man. America is in a very vulnerable position, man. All right. And this is just how prophecy is uh, foretold to play out. Okay. Now, this is Revelation, the 13th chapter. Matter of fact. Uh, let's go here. I already got it pulled up over here. This is Revelation 13 and verse, I'm, I'm going to start at verse 4. It says, and they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Okay. Now the dragon is what the Roman Empire. Okay. Today it came back in the form of what? Uh, the uh, EU. The European Union, all right, which gave power unto the beast, which is NATO. Okay, NATO being what the the military might of the European Economic Community. It says, and they worship the beast, saying, "Who is like unto the beast?" All right, who is able to make war with him? So for so many years and for so long, this has been an unstoppable power and force in the earth NATO okay beginning with World War II alright uh, with uh, America dropping bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki you know no one has dared to try to come up against this beast but now like uh, Joel the third chapter alright what we just read the weak are saying uh, I'm strong and they are advancing beyond the means that America 
okay this beast all right america the uh the, the whore that rides the beast is capable of doing then you got these smaller countries uh making alliances with the larger countries all right and, and, and they're uh forming confederations to destroy this beast to destroy america man okay so let's go to revelation 17 all right revelation 17 and 16 it says and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast these shall hate the whore so not only is america all right the whore that controls this beast that rides the beast that dictates how nato moves all right oh uh, not only is america becoming weak but uh from within it's being destroyed uh, because a lot of uh, the uh, alliances that America has with these other countries is being uh, broken, and these these countries, all right, these uh, uh, European nations and these different nations that's in league with America are going to turn on America, all right. Going into what Yahweh Shah said about a nation being divided against itself cannot stand okay so <laughs> everything is playing out right on schedule all right right on schedule man it says in the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire all right because that's the end that's the end game for America, man, to be uh, completely annihilated off the face of the earth by thermonuclear fire. It says, For the Most High, Yahweh Shemihah Shah Power, hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will. So, the hearts being the minds of the kings of these other nations, they are working the will of Yahweh Shemihah Shah to destroy this whore. All right, to destroy America. And it says, and to agree and give their kingdom and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of Yahweh Shemiha shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. You know? So what great city reigneth over all 